Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Currently, I'm in my hometown, Kuching, which is in Borneo. And I have with me the Panasonic LX10. I want to do some street photography and bring you guys along with me. Let's do this. Some important disclaimers, this Panasonic LX10, this is not mine, I borrowed it from a friend and I have to return it after this video. I have also done a review for this Panasonic LX10 before, it is in a blog format some time ago, I'm not going to repeat myself here, this video is not a review of this Panasonic LX10, I just want to share my thoughts on using this camera, my experience shooting with it, what I like about the Panasonic LX10, what I dislike about it, and my general opinion on the one inch sensor type advanced compact cameras. There are many things that I like about this Panasonic LX10 camera. I love that it is a compact camera. It is still so small, so light. I can easily fit this into my pocket. I can bring it anywhere with me. I think it is one of the best travel compact cameras around. And yet it features a large one inch image sensor, which is larger than most image sensors used in smartphone cameras. And I think that this will produce much better quality than your average smartphones out there. Also, it has a very fast lens it is a 24 to 72 equivalent with bright aperture f1.4 to f2.8 i think for compact cameras this has the brightest aperture even today and i really love that this camera it just works you take it out you turn it on snap photograph and it's all in one you don't have to change the lens it is so convenient and i'm just rediscovering the joy of using compact cameras again today I think the image quality coming out from this camera is really good. The images come out very sharp, detailed, from wide angle 24 all the way to the telephoto end, I get consistently good results. The images come out full of contrast, fine details. I think the lens used in this camera is really good. Uh, it also helps with the one inch image sensor. You definitely get a much better looking image with better dynamic range. And all this in under good lighting, with low ISO shooting, the results I can say is almost is indistinguishable from even a micro four thirds kit lens, or even if you're using an APS-C or full frame camera at low ISO in good light. I think things will definitely change very quickly. Uh, the image quality will drop if the lighting conditions drop, and you're shooting with high ISO. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Dynamic range on this camera is actually really good. It is not on the same level as larger sensor format cameras, but at base ISO, ISO 125, which is for this Panasonic RX10, shooting bad lit conditions, I can recover plenty of details in the highlights and shadow region. It's no issue, the images still look really, really good. Another thing that I truly appreciate about this camera is the touch screen and it's actually a tilt screen which helps me a lot if I want to do some low angle composition. I feel that for purely for photography, especially for street photographers, we do a lot of low angle, we want to go below our waist and having a tilt screen is, is just easier to so just look at the screen and compose. Uh, in opposed to say the swivel screen where you have to flip the screen out, twist it around, it actually too many steps, just too many steps. I want quicker action and the tilt screen, it really helps. All right, give me a good smile. One, you angle people, huh? Okay, mirror a bit. Two, and last one, three. Okay, let me see the photo. Okay, handsome, Thank you so much, thank you so much. 
Bye. Bang, gambar boleh bang? Gambar, gambar. Gambar. Ah, gambar. Boleh lah. Okay. Okay lah. Adjust sikit. Ha. Satu. Dua. Tiga. Okay, tengok lah. Okay. Tengok. Banyak handsome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Of course, the LX10 is not perfect. There are things that I don't like about this camera. The first thing, colors. I think it's not just about this camera, it's just my dislike on Panasonic's color profile in general. I don't know what's wrong with Panasonic's color. Uh, they just don't look natural, they don't look right. Something is off with the reds, it's, it's like a green tint everywhere. And no matter how I try to correct it, it just doesn't seem to work. Maybe it's just me, I don't know if you're using a Panasonic camera. Let me know if you have any issues with Panasonic's colors. Uh, second thing I don't like is the handling. Uh, the grip, gripping area on this camera is a little bit too smooth. It's not substantial enough for the hand to properly hold the camera securely uh, when I'm shooting it single-handedly. And because it's a compact camera, I do want to use it single-handedly from time to time. And of course, the controls, being a small camera, is a little bit cramped. The buttons are a little bit too small. The dials are squishing too closely together. And I don't like the two dials being placed so close together on the lens. And both of the dials control different settings. The front one on the lens, it controls the zooming. At the back, it controls the aperture or the F number. And I find myself accidentally turning the dials wrongly. When I want to change the F number, I accidentally turn the zoom ring. Or if I want to zoom, and I accidentally change the aperture it's just so annoying but these are small problems I don't think they are deal breakers having said all that I must admit the limitations of the one inch image sensor while it is still larger than most smartphone cameras image sensors out there it'll definitely produce better results than most smartphones but it is still a small sensor and if you compare with larger sensor formats like micro four thirds APS-C or full frame you can see the clear gap of image quality. This is apparent when you shoot high ISO in low light. As you go to ISO 800, 1600 or beyond, the image quality quickly drops. Everyone is already complaining that Micro Four Thirds having a smaller sensor doesn't produce really good high ISO shooting. And you know what? This is much worse. And we are talking about quite a visible difference if you compare side by side. So for me, the limit, if I were to do anything serious, Micro Four Thirds is probably the smallest sensor that I want to work with. But hey, like I said, I'm using this camera today for casual fun. I'm doing POV street photography. I'm shooting with plenty of sunlight. I have no problem with this camera. I'm using a base ISO most of the time. So it still gives me fantastic results. If you wanna do more serious photography, if you need professional looking results, if you're shooting low light, if you need a lot more dynamic range, if you need to render shallow depth of field, hey, there are other alternatives, there are better options, there are larger format image sensor cameras out there. And I'm perfectly happy with my Micro Four Thirds cameras. I'm just trying this out, having fun. Gambar, gambar. Okay. Tengok sini, senyum. Gambar, adjust sikit. Okay. Uh, satu, dua, and last one. 
Okay, tengok. Handsome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. In the world where now full frame is the camera that everyone wants to get, and we are also not lacking options from APS-C cameras or micro four thirds, where does this one inch image sensor camera sit? If you're talking about small cameras, we do have really small micro four thirds cameras like the Panasonic GM1, which is even smaller than this LX10, and it's your own Panasonic's GM1 or GM5. And if you're talking about Micro Four Thirds Compact, we have the amazing LX100. It is a compact camera with a fixed zoom lens, yet it features a full-size Micro Four Thirds image sensor, which is still larger than this one-inch image sensor and will give you superior results in every single way. Then there is the Ricoh GR series cameras that features really small compact camera bodies, and they have large APS-C size sensor in it. Though the lens is actually fixed focal length, so you can't zoom like this LX10. My point is, the relevance of this one inch image sensor, well, it is getting challenged. Now, I do foresee that more and more smartphones will have one inch image sensor. We already have a Xiaomi, Sharp, uh, some of the camera manufacturers that they are trying to fit in the one inch image sensor in the smartphone. And we are getting good results from that. I think the future of smartphone photography, they will step up to larger sensor. I've said many times, the only sensible way is to upgrade the hardware. There's only so much you can do with software and computational photography. So a larger image sensor, like one inch, will definitely make more sense if you're using it in a smartphone. But for this compact camera, I think for now, it is still a really good solution. I find myself enjoying using this camera a lot. It is a one camera to do it all. It has a zoom lens, wide angle to medium telephoto. It is still compact. I can still fit it in my pocket. And I can still get much better quality than my smartphone or most smartphones out there. I'm not sure if you can see, it is actually starting to rain, it's drizzling, so I'm going to have to stop this session now. I hope you've enjoyed the session and you have enjoyed the photographs that I've shared. If you do like this video, if you've benefited from my sharing, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal, links in the description below on how I can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way, will definitely help me to continue making more videos and publish them right here. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.